Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCrady, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk podcast. This is Nancy McCrady. Welcome to the series Summer Readings. This is going to go throughout the next many, many episodes. And I will refer to many of the books that I have read, I am still reading, and any new ones that I might come across. So, let's enjoy summer readings together and let God sober us, awaken us, prepare and mature us for the days in which we live, that we might, as many of those that we have revered and respected over the ages, that we too might fall into that category of person who simply loved the Father and obeyed Him and lived out Christ as life. Love you all, my friends. Here we go. Summer Readings 2023. As we're just coming off of a short series of conversations uh, called Clean and Clear, where we begin to put our toe into some pretty deep waters of how we're going to move through times of transition, I have decided that over the um, next few episodes, I'm going to read excerpts, even if I've done it before, I'm going to do it again, excerpts from uh, a very, very classic book written by Diedrich Bonhoeffer called Life Together, the classic exploration of Christian community. Because some of what I've just discussed and opened up and talked about in Clean and Clear uh, is, I believe, a good place to segue into some readings from those that uh, went before us. Um, We, again, as I've stated, we must learn in our own life and experience and the experiential things that God requires us to walk through are some of the most pronounced, pivotal, powerful ways of learning. But it is also true that we want to glean from those who went before us and those who learned certain things through what they were living through, especially when we are living through um, similar things, we want to draw from their um, wisdom, the wisdom that they gained from God as they moved through those things. Uh, they finished their course. I've, I've done many series before about this. One time I did a long series way back in the early days of the podcast called Breadcrumbs. Because they, the, the folks that went before us left breadcrumbs for us all along the way. The bread, the word of God, the wisdom that they gained from God himself. And they left it for us and we would do well to read it. Not just read every snazzy, new, faddish thing that's coming down the pike in Christendom. Right? But to read those who have gone before us. It would do us well. So I want to just read right now just the introduction to the book, Life Together. Now, this isn't the Bible, my friends, so I'm not saying every single thing that I'm going to read is perfectly true, perfectly right, or that I'm in perfect agreement with it. I'm just reading what is present because it was the works of a man who lived through very uh, intense discipleship. Diedrich Bonhoeffer also wrote the book, The Cost of Discipleship, and who's to say I won't pull that one out too. So you may find that over these next days that I'm uh, in uh, Europe, I'm in Poland, Germany, Norway, all throughout the month of June, that I'm going to be reading different excerpts uh, and encouraging you. Maybe I'll only read one chapter from a certain book to get your appetite uh, awakened or wedded so that you'll search that book out for yourself because we don't need to wax eloquent like we're so brilliant. Why don't we just tell people where we got that wisdom from, what we've been reading for 20 years, so they can go to it themselves and see if it's something that they would maybe benefit from. There's a another book called Spiritual Leadership by J. Oswald Sanders. He has a book called Spiritual Discipleship that I've referred to several times. There are many, many, many books that I have read, but what they've all done is they've catapulted me deeper in with the Father. They've catapulted me into new depths of maturity 
They were tremendous reality checks for me and wake-up calls. And so this is why I think during this time it would be good to begin to uh, open this up. So here we go. I'm reading from the introduction from the book, Life Together, written by Diedrich Bonhoeffer. And I really hope you'll stay with me in it because he begins, you've heard me many times talk about the fact that I'm kind of on a little bit of a crusade to bring human love to an end (laughs) so that the love of God, which is what matures us and activates our faith in God, could be on the rise. Well, Diedrich Bonhoeffer has some wonderful things to say about the difference between self-love, human love, and the love of God as it uh, impacts life together. Christian community. Uh, And so I would encourage you to stay with me in this reading, even though every word might not hold your interest. There will come things that I think you will find uh, during the days that we're in that will be of great, great help to you. And so um, uh, the copyright on this book, now, now listen to this, was before I was even born. My, my, my. I was born in 1959. The copyright of this book was 1954 by Harper and Rowe Publishers. Wow. Wow. Yeah, these things were true even way back then. (laughs) Right? Because remember, God is not looking for people to be original. My friends, he's the original, but he's looking for those in every generation who will be a succession of his wisdom and who will say his truth right? And stay with his truth in every generation. And I pray that that's going to be us. So here we go. The introduction to Life Together by Diedrich Bonhoeffer. In the gray dawn of an April day in 1945 in the concentration camp at Flossenburg, shortly before it was liberated by the Allied forces, Diedrich Bonhoeffer was executed by special order of Heinrich Himmler. On Easter Monday, 1953, The pastors of Bavaria unveiled in the church in Flossenburg a tablet with this simple inscription. Diedrich Bonhoeffer, a witness of Jesus Christ among his brethren, born February 4, 1906 in Breslau, died April 9, 1945 in Flossenburg. Now let me just interject here that this place where Diedrich Bonhoeffer was born was then known as Breslau, but today it's Wrocław in Poland, which is where I land many times when I fly in. So I just wanted to make note of that. Back to the reading. For innumerable Christians in Germany, on the continent, in England, and in America, Dietrich Bonhoeffer's death has been a contemporary confirmation of Tertullian's dictum, quote, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church, close quote. For his life and death and his writings, which throb with the simple downright faith of one who has met Jesus Christ and accepted the ultimate consequences of that encounter in the world, which he defined as the sphere of concrete responsibility given to us by and in Jesus Christ, these are still a living witness in the ecumenical church which he served. Bonhoeffer was born in a family of seven children in Breslau in what is now East Germany. He grew up, however, in Berlin, where his father, a noted physician, was the first to occupy a chair of psychiatry in Germany. From his father, as he wrote in his last letter from prison, he learned what characterizes all that he wrote, an insistent realism, a, quote, turning away from the phraseology to the real, close quote. For him, Christianity could never be merely intellectual theory doctrine divorced from life or mystical emotion, but always it must be responsible, obedient action, the discipleship of Christ in every situation of concrete everyday life, personal and public. And it was this that led him in the end to prison and death. Six years before his imprisonment by the Gestapo, he had written, quote, when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die, close quote. Bonhoeffer grew up in a suburb of Berlin, a strong athletic youth and a closely knit happy family whose ties to one another were never broken. The children of the neighborhood with whom he played and made music, he played the piano skillfully, were those of Adolf von Harnack, the great scholar, and Hans Delbruck, the historian. At 16, Bonhoeffer was sure he wanted to study theology. After a year in Tübingen, 
He matriculated at Berlin in 1924 and spent his remaining student years there, riding into the university in the mornings on the streetcar with the venerable Harnack. His teachers were the great Berlin scholars, Hohl, Seberg, Leitzmann, and Lutgart. But already he had become a proponent of the modern theology of the church, though he had never heard Karl Barth's lectures. The story is told that he once took part in a session of one of Barth's seminars in Bonn and quietly inserted into the discussion a quotation from Luther, quote, The curse of a godless man can sound more pleasant in God's ears than the hallelujah of the pious, close quote. Who threw that in? asked the delighted Barth, and so he became acquainted with Bonhoeffer. This was the young student with an insight into Luther's forthright realism who was later to expound so clearly that other paradoxical and often misunderstood statement of Luther's, quote, sin boldly but believe and rejoice in Christ more boldly still, close quote. At the age of 21, he, Bonhoeffer, presented his doctor's thesis, a dogmatic study of the communion of saints, and in his later inaugural dissertation, Act and Being, he defined the position and significance of dialectical theology, which means faith over reason. In 1928, he was a vicar in Barcelona, and in 1929, he was back in Berlin. After his admission to the theological faculty in 1930, he was sent to Union Theological Seminary in New York for a year. He spoke of it as famed and esteemed as the stronghold of criticism in America, a place of free discussion made possible by the civic courage peculiar to Americans and the lack of any sort of officialism and personal relations. Here he learned to know both the Nibers. He was also fascinated by Negro spirituals and the struggle of the Negro for equality. In later years, when the walls went up around Germany, he introduced his students to these songs. Eberhard Betsch, Bonhoeffer's closest friend, now a pastor to students in Berlin and editor of his posthumous words, and to whom the writer of this essay is indebted for its substance, writes, quote, We hummed, swing low, sweet chariot, 20 years before the radio and concert halls made it familiar here, close quote. On returning to Berlin, he began his lectures in systematic theology and immediately gathered about him a group of students. His first book, Creation and Fall, grew out of his lectures, a theological exposition of the first three chapters of Genesis. In addition, he served as pastor to students in the technical school in Charlottenburg, where his services were crowded. Then came the fateful year, 1933, in February, Bonhoeffer delivered a lecture broadcast over the Berlin radio in which he flayed the German public for its hankering after a leader who would inevitably become a misleader so long as he did not clearly refuse to become the idol of the lead. The broadcast was cut off before he had finished. When it became apparent that Hitler, the idol, had succeeded, he accepted a call to be the pastor of two German congregations in London, for he refused, speaking of Bonhoeffer, he refused to have any part in the German-Christian compromise with the Nazi government. In England, he formed a close friendship with Bishop Bell of Chichester and became one of the foremost interpreters to the world outside of events in the German churches. Then, while preparing to visit Gandhi in India through the mediation of C.F. Andrews to pursue an interest in pacifism, he received a call from the Confessing Church to take charge of an illegal clandestine seminary for the training of young pastors in Pomerania. He went back at once. In 1935, he moved to Zingst and from there to Finkenwald near Stetten where he shared a common life in emergency built houses with 25 vicars. This was life together, the life of the Christian community, which is described and documented with biblical insights in the book, Gamen Symes Lieben, 1938, <laughs> here presented in translation. This is a good place for me to stop and say, please forgive me for mispronouncing several of these um, words, names of cities and places. 
In this period, now I'm back reading, in this period he also wrote Knock Foliage, published in England and the United States as The Cost of Discipleship. These two works are the distillation of his fundamental message, what it means to live with Christ. Shortly after publishing another brief work, Das Gebet Buch der Bibel, which is the prayer book of the Bible, an introduction to the Psalms, which carries forward the ideas expressed in chapter 2 of this book, he was forbidden to write or publish, and the underground seminary was closed by the Gestapo. Now let me interject here, my friends, that this underground seminary, where it talked about being in Stettin, in the area of Zingst and the neighborhood of Finkenwald, my friends, is now present-day Chechen, Poland, where I have been. I have acquaintances that are there. I've stood in the airport in Szczecin before I was flying out when I realized where I actually was, and I stretched out my arms and I said to the Father, I claim this area for you again and stand on the shoulders of Diedrich Bonhoeffer and many others who have gone before us for your purposes, Father, here in the Baltic area. And I want to say here again, I still stand for what it is that God has written over all of Kushalan, Poland, Stettin, for this whole Baltic region in the northern area of Poland. I stand for it. So I needed to interject that here. <laughs> now let me return to reading the introduction to this book. But already Bonhoeffer was deeply involved in the events of his dictator-dominated country. Through Hans von Dohani, the husband of his sister Crystal, he learned something of the crisis that was centering in General Fritsch and the secret plans for the overthrow of Hitler being made by General Beck and others. The man who felt all the force of the pacifist position and weighed the cost of discipleship concluded in the depths of his soul that to withdraw from those who were participating in the political and military resistance would be irresponsible cowardice and flight from reality. Not, as his friend Beth says, that he believed that everybody must act as he did, but from where he was standing, he could see no possibility of retreat into any sinless, righteous, pious refuge. The sin of respectable people reveals itself in flight from responsibility. And he saw that sin falling upon him and he took his stand. Here he acted in accord with his fundamental view of ethics that a Christian must accept his responsibility as a citizen of this world where God has placed him. In 1939, he was in the United States for a brief time. His friends here urged him to remain and use his gifts as a scholar and teacher in the service of the ecumenical church. But he, Bonhoeffer, refused and boarded one of the last ships to return to his manifest destiny. And from then on, his life was devoted to tasks assigned by the confessing church and the resistance. During this time until his death, he devoted his spare moments to the writing of his ethics, which he regarded as the special contribution he could make as a theologian. Moving about the country, preaching and speaking to clandestine groups, since he was prohibited from teaching, writing, or remaining in Berlin, acting as a courier between various groups, he wrote whole chapters of his book Ethics in the Benedictine Abbey at Etel and other temporary refuges. But one day in April 1943, the blow fell. On April 5th, Bonhoeffer, with his sister Crystal and her husband Hans von Dohani, were arrested and incarcerated in Tegel, a military prison, where he remained until October 8, 1944. During this time, the guards were friendly to this strong pastor and secretly took him to the cells of despairing prisoners to minister to them. They preserved his papers, essays, and poems, and even established a complete courier service to the family and friends outside. Then, after the miscarriage of the pooch, of July 20th, Bonhoeffer was transferred from one prison to another, the Gestapo prisons in Berlin, Buchenwald, Schoenberg, and finally Flossenburg, and all contacts with the outside world were severed. 
His last weeks were spent with men and women of many nationalities, Russians, Englishmen, Frenchmen, Italians, and Germans. One of these, an English officer, wrote, quote, Bonhoeffer always seemed to me to spread an atmosphere of happiness and joy over the least incident and profound gratitude for the mere fact that he was alive. He was one of the very few persons I have ever met for whom God was real and always near. On Sunday, April 8, 1945, Pastor Bonhoeffer conducted a little service of worship and spoke to us in a way that went to the heart of all of us. He found just the right words to express the spirit of our imprisonment, the thoughts and the resolutions it had brought us. He had hardly ended his last prayer when the door opened and two civilians entered. They said, Prisoner Bonhoeffer, come with us. That had only one meaning for all prisoners, the gallows. We said goodbye to him. He took me aside and said, This is the end, but for me it is the beginning of life. The next day he was hanged in Flossenburg. The text on which he spoke on that last day was, With his stripes are we healed. Such was the life and death of Diedrich Bonhoeffer, a teacher of the church in the highest sense of the word, a writer of profound theological and biblical insight, and yet close to contemporary life and sensitive to reality, a witness who saw the way of discipleship and walked it to the end. No man could be but proud to introduce him further to those who do not read the language he wrote. And that, my friends, is the close of just reading the introduction to the book, Life Together, by Diedrich Bonhoeffer. Can we set our hearts towards hearing readings from this now over the next episodes and simply let God sober us Awaken us, alert us, and prepare and mature us for the days in which we live, my friends. That whether we live a long, long life, (laughs) or we're in our last days, who knows, can we receive the absolute, the absolute encouragement from those that have gone before us and the very present abiding presence of our Father. And let's get ready, my friends. Let's get ready. Love you all. Glad we were together here on Summer Readings on Tent Talk Podcast. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccrady.com or follow her on social media at nbmccrady.com.